What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mikey Pipes. Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. It's a little after noon. And before heading to lunch, we're going to do a quick little service call. Well, <laughs> you know what? I just jinx myself. They're never quick and easy. Uh, sometimes they are. But we're going to a service call in Valley Stream. Uh, customer central air conditioning is not working. So let's see what's going on over there. This is a brand new client for the company. So, uh, you know, we're going to roll out the red carpet and give the real, real, real royalty treatment. All right, guys, let's get going. Good morning. How's it going? Good morning. We're here for your air conditioning. Yes. It's back to me. Yeah, perfect. All, All right. right. Tell me what's going on. So, uh, it's been blowing hot air. Uh, I reset. Hot the... air or just room temperature here? Ambient air. Just like room temperature, honestly. Not like hot. Uh, just a little bit cool, but yeah. Like cool How long has that been going on for? Uh, so we turned on the AC Saturday. I tried to reset the circuit breaker. How did it work over the weekend? Didn't it's, work. No. Okay. Let's go to the uh, the thermostat. Do it yeah. mind. And do you know where the return filter is? The main uh, filter. Oh, seriously. Okay. So let's start the thermostat. So there's a couple. There's one here, and there's one upstairs. I don't know. I know that they all control uh, different okay. zones. So let's lower the temperature on this. Down for a little bit and then uh yeah, let me give it a press okay <laughs> yeah, this one's old but, yeah uh, it's it's not that old it's just i would say bootleg <laughs> <laughs> this is the one uh oh this is probably the main one yeah okay. all right see so we got a, is that a carrier system yeah. yes carrier infinity touch nice so it's not that old of a system unless it's a brand new thermostat no this is only a couple years old maybe like Four, and five. the return is up there and the filter looks clean. This is like 20 by 30 by 1 or 24 by 30 by 1. Let's see. 24. Yeah, 20, 24 by 30 by 1. Okay. Can I get to the, to the out door from the front door? Uh, yeah, so okay. I'll grab my tools and... Okay, yeah, so just make a left and it's on like this side of the house. Here. All right, perfect. Let's go find the outdoor unit. Corner property here. I don't think it's this way. Other way, huh? Uh, that way, yeah. This way? Yeah, you're going the right way. Okay. Oh, I should have parked in the corner here. <laughs> All right. Try to walk on the grass as little as possible. It shows that you care about the customer's home. All right. This guy kind of looks a little right. Nothing. I got my money on. I got my money on refrigerant. All right, for starters. I feel heat. And my condenser fan motor is hot too. It's hot up here. So I got my HIK Micro B20 thermal imaging camera. I'm going to turn that on, open up the viewport. And we're going to see what we got going on in here. Well, we have a burnt up little battery. Please charge. Okay, relax. So we definitely have a condenser fan motor, more than likely in thermal uh, overload. So that's out. So let's go take a peek. I don't see much going on with that compressor. Then again, we have that insulation blanket around it. So let's take the access panel off, see what we see. All right. Dual capacitor looks okay. We're flashing there. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, and eight. Let's look that up. Let's just push in the contact, see what happens. We have hum. We got a hum. 
we got a hum. We're gonna take out this capacitor and check it. And also we're gonna check the wiring to the compressor. All right, I disconnected power. I double checked voltage here with my, not only my non-contact electrical tester, but also with a multi-tool multimeter. There's no voltage present here, all right? Now, I got the contactor removed. And we're gonna test All right, that. So here is my dual capacitor. The terminal with four prongs is common. The terminal with three is HERM, which stands for hermetically sealed compressor. And the one with one is just fan. So I have my multimeter set for uh, to read capacitance right there, those microfarads. And let's go to C, I'm reading nothing. So now I'm gonna take that and put it on Herm, and I'm reading 10.6. And this capacitor is a 47.5, sorry, 45, 7.5. We have a bad dual capacitor. All right, I used my Milwaukee M18 compact air blower, and I cleaned out all the dust and debris that was all up in this uh, electrical compartments. There's my new 45 7.5 dual capacitor. We're going to restore power and we're going to see what happens because that one was not the OEM one. And we should probably read our fan and see what yeah, the capacitor is. If you look right there, there it is 7.5 on the dual on the Capacitance needed for the fan. All right, let's plug power in. Now the fan motor may still be in thermal overload, but let's just see what happens. Okay, it's expected that we have a little bit of a delay right now because we have that control board right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do in the interim, I'm just gonna push in the contactor and see what happens. No condenser fan motor. So that may be out on thermal overload. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I got the cool presser tool out, right? And I've never used it on a uh, condenser fan motor, but you know what? It's the top of the condenser fan. And if that was rain, it would have the same effect. But uh, the sides of the condenser fan motor are getting wet. So if this works, great. If it doesn't, well, we need a new condenser fan motor anyway. So we'll let this run for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. We disconnect is pulled. Our new fan, a dual capacitor is installed. Now we're gonna see what happens. All right, while I was letting the cool presser run on top of the condenser fan motor, I took the liberty and obtained or documented the model and serial number of the unit for the service invoice. I then used my uh, CE Northeast app to check and validate warranty. This model is from 2010 and was never registered, so it only had a five year parts warranty. Even if they registered, the, registered it, they would have a 10 year, but nonetheless, not registered. So let's plug in power, All right. and let me push in the contactor. Oh, look at that. Didn't even have to get that far. Look at that. So I guess the cool presser worked. Okay. Now I get to explain you a diagnosis, what okay. I did, and you tell me if you want to approve the repair or not. All right. Um, system blowing out cold air, we verified that. Okay. Make sure the filter's clean, it's clean. The outdoor unit I was getting a signal to turn on, yeah. uh, but because it's a more modern and sophisticated system, it actually has a little computer board inside. Wasn't and communicating. Oh, you're not set up in a communicating, yeah. you're not set up with a communicating system, okay. but you are, it does receive the signal, and then it tells the outdoor unit what to do. Okay. Uh, so it was out on an error. Yeah. The error, unfortunately, didn't match what is listed as an error code. Mm -hmm. 
So now we have to use our, you know, our brains and not rely on a computer and a little display to tell us what's wrong, right? Um, I noticed as soon as I was getting to the unit that it, it, it sensed that it was hot. Like a lot of heat coming yeah, from the yeah. unit. Uh, and I noticed that the, and I used a thermal imaging camera to see a picture of temperature in front of me. And sure enough, the condenser fan motor was bright as can be. Okay. You know, super, super hot. Right. So we know that it was out on thermal overload or thermal lockout. Okay. Um, I tried, I bypassed the computer board and I told it to manually run. Mm -hmm. And the compressor wouldn't turn on and the condenser fan motor would turn on. I didn't assume, I didn't think the compress the con fan motor wouldn't come on. Mm -hmm. I I didn't I didn't think the, the fan motor would work because I know it's out on overload. But I wanted to see if the compressor would work. Mm -hmm. But that didn't come on either. Okay. So then I asked you for a hose. Right? I, and I have a little gadget that we stick on top of a unit and it's usually designed to cool off compressors, yeah. but I use it just to cool off the actual fan motor first. Um, while I'm doing that, I check the um, the capacitor, it's basically it's like a glorified battery, mm -hmm. and it gives the fan and the compressor more oomph than it needs to start and run. Okay. And it was completely out of range. It's like a nine volt battery reading negative voltage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I put a new one in for testing purposes. A few more minutes, let the uh, water, cool, water cool off the motor, and mind you, the motor may still die. Right. But right now, it's running. Working. Okay. The compressor's running. The fan motor's running. The, I could he, I could feel heat being discharged off the top of the unit, which gotcha. that's the heat coming from the house. Okay. And if you feel the vents, it should feel cold. Yeah, yeah, I can tell the difference already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a disclaimer: the I'm not in the I'm not an individual, and nor is the company. You know that kind of company is going to replace a part because it didn't start right away. Mm -hmm. um, there's always something we should try first before I replace a motor. The motor. Or anything. Now I took the liberty while I was waiting, also waiting for it to cool off. To we have a carrier app. And I typed in the serial number, mm -hmm. and the manufacture date was uh, 2010 for the system. It was registered to a different address, not this address, which is kind of mm -hmm. odd. Um, but it, it appeared that it was never registered at all, but it did give a different address. Okay. Uh, but it was only a five year parts warranty anyway. Gotcha. Right, right. So even if I, and even if it was registered and everything was legit, it'd only be 10 year parts, and that expired two years ago. Right, right, okay. So we're not the kind of company to just replace a part. It was when it dies, yeah. it's going to die. Right. Right. Um, and that's when you replace the motor. Gotcha. Okay. Spend, the, spend the big bucks for it. Okay. All right. So and just he, pretty much when that happens, it happens. Yes. So number one rule here is make sure the filters are always clean. Yeah. Uh, when you get a copy of your invoice on page two, there's the filter size. And also if you want to go online, there's a website that we use called fil fil filterfetch.com and mm -hmm. you could buy... Uh, you type in the code and you, it gives you different options of filters and what's pretty cool about them they deliver right to you yeah. uh they handle the credit card you know the payment of it and they'll send you a reminder based on which kind of filter you get how often to change it gotcha so we so like it depends on what filter you're getting yeah so gotcha. your filter is 24 by 30 by one yeah uh it's we you know we would like to recommend pleated filters especially on higher end systems like you have yeah it's a carrier it's the only what thing do i have right now carrier you know uh, the filter i'm using i mean oh it's a pleated filter oh gotcha. uh, no sorry it's a non-pleated filter it's just okay. a straight panel it looks like just like like a piece of like a sponge right but it's a very thin sponge obviously got you so maybe um, next filter maybe next filter go with something better you know if you don't want to go online go to home depot amazon yeah. but what's great about filter fetch is that they will actually send you an email hey time to change your filters okay because they say they sell just one filter but it's expensive right. you buy six or 12 of them at a time you're good for a couple yeah, years okay yeah the pleated ones normally you change every 60 90 days mm -hmm. um and if you have any allergies or asthma in the house, it's great. Okay. If not, keep buying what you're buying because it's the most cost-effective, disposable. Have a nice day. Right, right, right. <laughs> any questions? No. Okay. Sounds good. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it somewhat entertaining, yet mostly educational. I got to tell you, I learned something new today. And that is using the cool presser, which you can get at True Tech Tools. Um, I'll put a link in the description box down below. Um to cool off the condenser fan motor. Like, duh. I was sitting there like off camera, you didn't see that, but just with a little bit of spray, just trying to get the side of the condenser fan motor. But listen, you know, if it had too much water and it got inside the motor itself and the windings of the motor, I guess that would not be good. Um, but at this point, if it was either gonna work or wasn't gonna work and the damage is already done. You know, there's only so much thermal, thermal overload that motors can take before they eventually burn out so fortunately for this guy um cooling off the condenser fan motor replacing the totally out of range dual capacitor allowing this, the fan motor to cool off allowed for proper operation
put that in your in your noggin and save it as a tech tip. Cool presser for condenser fan motors. Who would have thought? <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time watching one of my videos on this Mikey Pipes channel, uh, if you found it entertaining or educational, please consider subscribing. And let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, be well. God bless. If Stay you're safe. not calling Mikey Pipes, you're getting screwed. There you go. That's right.